Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 2P, the last lecture of Module 2. And here we're going to build on pretty much everything we've done in this module to see how we can infer evolutionary history by looking at the sequence differences of genes in organisms that are alive today. So in order to infer differences back in time, we need to start with homologous sequences. We can only compare the differences if the sequences are homologous. And you'll remember that homologous means not just that they're similar, but that they're so similar that we are convinced this could only be true if they are descended from a common ancestor. So once we are confident that they're descended from a common ancestor, then we can make a lot of inferences about the steps between the common ancestor and now. So the next step is to count the differences between the sequences, and we do that pairwise. So here we're comparing the human and the bonobo sequence. Here we're comparing the chimp and the bonobo sequence. And here we're comparing the human and the chimp sequence. And as I've drawn it, when we compare these, we see 10 differences between human and bonobo. Now, this could be true of real sequence, provided we chose an appropriately short sequence. There's, oh, maybe 1% sequence difference between humans and chimps or bonobos. So maybe if we looked at a thousand base pairs, we might see 10 differences. Now that we've counted the differences, we can use these differences to make inferences about how long ago these different pairs of animals shared a common ancestor. Humans and chimps have 10 differences, so do humans and bonobos. But chimps and bonobos have only six differences. And this tells us that chimps and bonobos are more closely related to each other than the either of them is to humans. Now, no, this isn't an evolutionary tree here. All this is is a diagram showing who is more closely related to who based on the sequence differences. Now we can use those sequence differences to actually draw a tree. So drawing the tree is actually, in principle, very simple. All you want to do is to make the branch lengths that's these lines here, proportional to the relationship distances. And I'll show you how that's done. Now, we won't be asking you to actually generate phylogenetic trees, but I'll show you how it's done so you can see that it does make sense. There's only six differences between bonobo and chimps. That means they have a more recent common ancestor than either of them does with humans, between whom there are ten differences. So how are we going to distribute these six differences between chimps and bonobos? Well, I'll say, well, probably half of them occurred in the lineage leading from the common ancestor to chimps, and the other half of them occurred in the lineage leading from the common ancestor to bonobos. So the relationship between chimps and bonobos is traced back through their common ancestor, and it's in this time that the sequence divert differences accumulated. They accumulated moving in that direction. But that's the important thing is, how do we draw the branches? Where do we put the common ancestor? So now we say, OK, but there's 10 differences between human and chimp, and 10 differences between human and bonobos. How are we going to draw that? Well, if there's 10 differences from this ancestor, then there's probably, we should draw, five differences that arose along this branch, and then five more differences that arose along this branch. We've already accounted for three of those differences, so there's two more differences along here. So these branches are of length three, this bit is of length two, this bit is of length five. It's a very, very simple tree, but this is the basic principle of inferring relationships. Now, here's a question for you. We're not going to ask you to draw the tree, but we are asking, in this table of data showing the relationships between different insects, 
These numbers are the numbers of sequence differences. And the question asks you which pair is most closely related. Now, you might not have seen a table drawn like this before, so I'll just explain what it looks like. The number in the box is the number of differences between the organisms who are, whose names are on the column and the row. So nine differences between beetles and flies, 12 differences between earwigs and flies, 13 differences between earwigs and mosquitoes.